for righteousness, truth. Let's just back up. Okay. So misconceptions of, uh, of why we don't necessarily put on or believe we have the armor of God on. One is fear, uh, which has a lot to do with that movie because it's funny when uh, people call the gold out in you and uh, especially if you've been a Christian a while and you walk out all the things that, that God has in you, like you know what the truth is, you know what righteousness is, you know what salvation is, you know what the, the sword of the spirit does, you know the, uh, what, how to use the shield, all this stuff. And then someone comes up to you and says, you know what? Just like that guy said, you are the next emperor of Caesar. And the guy looked at him and was like, no, I'm not. I'm not. Because his first instinct was like, I don't even know how to, how to begin or what to do or who, how to be that person. You know, but the funny thing was, is, is the thing that I, I look at when I think about the armor is, man, um, the armor isn't one size fits all. Does that make sense? Like, have you ever tried on, I hate a one size fits all hats because I'll put it on and it doesn't fit because my head's too small and it's really frustrating because then I have to go to the gas station and get a, a gas station hat. And usually that doesn't even fit very well and I don't even like it anyway. But um, so God has made my armor uniquely for me. I couldn't fit in Dan Dano's armor. I couldn't fit in Mark's armor, you know, and they definitely couldn't fit in mine. <laughs> um, but what I <laughs> oh, I'm thinking. Never mind. I'm not going to go there. Uh, I'm just thinking Tommy Boy, so if you know that movie, you know where I'm at. Anyway, I meant that towards Dan, or not you, Mark. Uh, anyway, uh, so you don't have to be afraid that you're going to have to carry this. If you're real small, you're going to have to carry like this huge armor, like David. Like when King Saul gave David, when he was like a servant or whatever, his armor and said, go fight Goliath. And David's like, what the heck? He puts all the armor on and he can't get it off. And, or he can't walk, basically. So he takes it all off and he goes and fights Goliath. So God's not going to put armor on you that's not going to fit you. Does that make sense? Like if you, um, you, if you have a hard time with, like I love how each one has a, has a different meaning. Like you know, the truth holds all everything together. You know, like it holds the the um, breastplate down. It holds your sword, probably, unless you like, you know, you could have a samurai looking. Who knows? You know, armor's unique. So anyway, but it holds it all together. And um, uh, um. In a, let's, so the, one of the biggest things I kind of want to talk about is you have to get, it, you can't be afraid to fail when you walk out of the cage. Does that make sense? Even if you don't understand every aspect of the armor that God has put on you, you can learn how to use it. Um, which leads me to some of this stuff up here, like the construction stuff. Like I didn't learn how to use this stuff by, well, one, I learned how to use it by doing it, but I also had somebody tell me how to do it. Does that make sense? Like the first time I laid tile, um, my dad showed me how to, to lay tile, and then I did it, and then he stopped, and so I'm a better tile layer than he is. But <laughs> he gave me the first instruction yeah. to do it, yeah. to walk out of 
uh, to walk out of my fear and just do it. Um, one, I was telling this story earlier today with a bobcat. Oh my gosh, can I tell you how scary that is to just turn it, for the first time, how scary it is to just turn it on? Because already you're thinking, I'm going to run into something. Like you just turn, even just turning the key and you're like, oh gosh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break something. Um, and then slowly but surely, I learned how to run it well. You know what I'm saying? And, and the same thing is with, with your armor. You're going to learn how to use your helmet of salvation to actually put it on your head. You know what I mean? And to keep it on. And some of our, some of our helmets are a little thicker than others because, because Satan continues to come at us and tell us lies and, and, and continues to uh, try to persuade us that we aren't worth it or that we can't come out of and live in the freedom of what Christ has given us. And... Um, I could sit here and tell stories all day. I mean, about the bobcat. This one time. All right, just one more story. Actually, the band can come back up because I feel like they're going to just... Wow, it's probably been five minutes. But uh, this was really funny. Actually, the bass player who plays here, not Philip, but Aaron Connor, um, he used to work for us. And this one time, he was burying this ditch with the bobcat. And he totally, like, got it front-ended into it. It was really funny. And someone had to go, my dad actually had to go get the bobcat out because he couldn't. But it's just insane to me how he gave it a try. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. he, he was willing to step out and give it a try. And I think we can't let fear run us. We got to be willing to give, give it a try. Yeah. To give um, whatever it may be that God has for us a try. It says in a... 2 Corinthians 6, 10 through, uh, 3 through 10. It says, we put no stumbling block in anyone's path so that our ministry will not be discredited. Rather, as servants of God, we commend, command ourselves commend ourselves in every way in great endurance in trouble hardship and distress in beatings imprisonments and riots in hard work sleepless nights and hunger in purity understanding patience and kindness in the holy spirit and in sincere love in truthful speech and in, and in the power of god with weapons of righteousness in the right hand and in the in the left through glory and dishonor Bad report and good report. Gen genuine, yet regarded as impostors. Known, yet regarded as unknown. Dying, and yet we live on. Beaten, and yet not killed. Sorrowful, yet always rejoicing. Poor, yet making many rich. Having nothing, and yet possessing everything. This is what that scripture means to me. It means... There is enough room in my life to make mistakes. That regardless of whether I chop somebody's hand off with my sword, with the word of God, with my tongue, or if I forget one day that my helmet is on and I am and I'm like, God, why have you forsaken me? What is going on? Like all those things. If I don't believe that I'm saved by, by, by Christ, that he has rescued me from damnation of hell. God can still use that. He can still use me. He can still use you. Isn't that crazy? It's crazy because, like, I've been talking about this with so many different people. And let me tell you, every time I, I told them, it came out a different way. And uh, and uh, this is the one thing that it comes back to when it comes to the armor of God. It's your relationship with Christ. If you don't pursue him, then you're not going to understand how to use the things that he's given you. Like I wouldn't use this hammer like to pound in 